With the help of Hashem, we are learning Psachim Daft Tzadik Tes. First, we will be learning the final Amid of Patek Mishahoya, the ninth chapter. We're going to be concluding and elaborating, learning a Braisa on the Mishnah. In the Mishnah, we had two cases, two general cases. We had a case where a Pesach got lost, and there was, let's say, we'll call him a Shliach or a representative or someone who went out to find the lost Pesach that we're calling Pesach Aleph. The rest of the group got for themselves Pesach Beis. So we had all different scenarios. Bottom line was is that if one asked the other, the Shliach tells the group, listen guys, when you bring a new one, have me in mind. Or if the group tells the Shliach, if you find Pesach Aleph, have us in mind, then there's one series of halachas. Because then indeed, if he finds Pesach Aleph, so de facto there were two karbonis that were slaughtered for the shliach and for the group. So then the general rule is, is that whichever one was slaughtered first will be their carbon Pesach. But that brought about the challenge that if we don't know which one was brought first, even though everyone fulfilled their obligation, but no one is allowed to eat from either of the Pesachim because once one was slaughtered, that automatically deregistered them, it removed them, it made them withdraw from the other one. Then we had at the end of that, that if no one told anything to anyone, so each one is basically on their own, then you know, then the, the, the application of that, the conclusion of that will be very simple. If you brought it, if the shliach found it, then he brought it as good, and if not, uh, then he has, he's going to have to bring Pesach Sheni. And then we had the second case in the Mishnah, and that was not that a Pesach got lost, but two animals or more that were pre-registered with groups of people, the animals, the Psachim got mixed up one with the other, and the basic line, the basic Nakud of the Mishnah was, is that each group has to retain with, on it at least one of its original members, and, because, and, and, and we could achieve that, and the Mishnah got very creative at the end, even if you had two karbonis that only had one person on each, Reuven on one and Shimon on the other, we're going to speak more, we're going to review it more when we learn the Gemara. Even there, the Mishnah found a solution, even though we don't know which animal belongs to which person, of them being able, as long as they bring in new people off the street, they bring in a Levi, they bring in a Yehuda, and then you can still have one of the original members, as we'll again repute, re review when we learn the Gemara, and there's a solution for that as well. The Gemara is going to give many details to that. We're going to quote Amachloikis, Rabbi Huda, and Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi Yossi also subscribes to the principle that once a Pesach was designated as a Pesach, it may never remain for a moment minuiless, ownerless, but Rabbi Yossi doesn't need for any one of the original members to remain registered on the Pesach. As long as there's someone always registered on the Pesach and it's brought, even if it's at the end of the day being brought for no one of the original group, according to Rabbi Yossi, it's going to be good as well. And that's not the Shita of Rabbi Yehuda, and we're going to clarify exactly which Tana from these two is our Mishnah following. We will then start out of a Pesachim, or there's two versions, Edif Pesachim is another Girsa, we'll speak it out when we learn when we begin the new Pedic, we're going to be learning so many practical halachas, not only regarding Pesach. Nowadays, tragically, in Golas, God willing, Mashiach will be here this, this year, so we're going to have the carbon Pesach, but the Pesach that we were familiar with, we're going to be learning about the mitzvahs of eating matzah, we're going to be quoting in Tois Vesa Yerushalmi, that kol ha'oichel, whoever eats matzah on the eve of Pesach, he's violating a rabbinic rule, and it's ke'ilu boil arusasli bebeis chamav. It's like a person. These are the words of Chazal. It's like a person having a relation with his wife to be when she's still living with her parents before marriage. He jumped the gun. Now we have minhagim not to eat matzah from way prior to that. Our minig is not to have matzah already from Purim, from right after Purim. But the isur that Abanan is on out of Pesach. We're going to be learning about matzah ashira. Wealthy matzah, meaning matzah that's not made out of flour and water. Matzah that's made out of flour and fruit juice. Matzah that's made out of egg, egg matzahs. We're going to see Rabbeinu Tam, we're going to learn some toysfus in today. We're going to learn about the din of the four cups 
of the Seder, Din Dalot Kaisis. We're going to be learning, at least in the Rashbam, the origin of the Din Dalot Kaisis. We're going to be learning about a phenomenal uh, sheet of Toysvis, which is not what we practice, regarding who exactly is obligated to drink the Dalot Kaisis. You know, when it comes to Kiddush, nowadays, even though it's ideal, it's a Hidur for everyone to taste a little bit of the wine, but that doesn't have, to, doesn't have to be that way. Today, if you are the one making Kiddush, you have to drink, you know, at least the Roiv of the Revis. But afterwards, everyone fulfilled their obligation, even if they didn't drink any of the wine. What is the din concerning the Dalit Kaisis, right? Is it also suffi- is, it, is it enough for the head of the household or from whoever is being appointed to make Kiddush for them to drink the first cup? And everyone will fulfill the obligation that's actually being made on Kiddush, like every other Friday night. Or is there something unique about the din of the Dalit cups, of the four cups of wine, that every member is obligated to drink the Dalit Kaisas, which is how we do it. That's going to be in today's daf. We're going to be learning Emachlik is again, just like an Ahmed Aleph, we're going to have Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yossi, we're going to have an Ahmed Beis. Another Emachlik is between Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yossi regarding every Erev Shabbos, every Erev Yontif. Is there a prohibition or is there an obligation to refrain from eating after a certain point around the time of Mincha Ketana that will Chazad again will review Mincha Gedoyla, Mincha Ketana in order for people to enter Shabbos with an appetite to eat the Su'uda of Shabbos and Anyamtev. Shabbos and Anyamtev, eating the meal is a, um, it's, it's Divrei Kabbalah, right? It comes Vikaras Allah Shabbos Oinik. But nevertheless, we have from the words of the prophets that it's a, you were supposed to have a su'ud on Shabbos and on Yantiv, And it's ideal to eat a meal when you are hungry, with an appetite. So do we have such a restriction of what one may not do Erev, on the eve at, after a certain point? Or is there no such obligation, no such limitation of eating prior to Shabbos, prior to Yantiv, And then Erev Pesach will be indeed unique and much, much more let us start on the Tzadik Ches Amid Beis. We are t- third line before the bottom of the Amid. So again, we already reviewed in the intro the first section of the Mishnah, speaking about a Pesach that gets lost, and a Shliach goes out there, and he's looking for the Pesach, Pesach Aleph, with all of the cases that we had in the Mishnah. So Tanu Rabbanon, the Braisa, makes a very important observation. That in the case where Amar Lohen V'Amru if each one, if the shliach tells the group, guys, if you get another Pesach, do it for me. And the group tells the shliach, if you find the Pesach Aleph, do it for us. It means if, if every Pesach remains connected to all of the people, and yes, the din will then be that whichever one will be slaughtered first will be everyone's mitzvah and oichel min harishain. Then I let me just add the words, etc. But the downside will be that if we don't know which one was brought first, then no one will be able to eat from either of them. And let's contrast that with the last clause in that general case, where loy amar lohen veloy amru loy. If no one told the other that the Pesach that they bring should be for the other person. So not that they told the shliach or the person who went, not a shliach, someone went to look for it. No one told him, if you find it, bring it for us. They did not tell it to him. He also, before going out to look for the lost Pesach, did not tell the remaining group, if you end up getting a Pesach number two, have me in mind. If no one told anything to each other, based on the rule that you cannot just bring a Pesach for someone else, a husband to a wife is an exception. A father to his children are exceptions. But generally, if someone did not ask you to register them, you may not. And therefore, each one is bringing for themselves. So then the Mishnah said, right? Now, there is a downside to this latter case. And that is, what happens if, let's say, you're the guy that goes looking for the lost Pesach. And you didn't tell people, have me in mind if you buy a new one. You didn't say that. Fine. What happens if you didn't find it? They bought a new one, but, they, but, but you didn't uh, ask them to, have, to register you or not. So what's going to be the din? Then you're going to miss the mitzvah. But if you didn't bring your own, then you're going to have to bring Pesach Sheni. But you know what? There's a big upside. At least you know where you're standing. If you found your Pesach, you'll bring it. If you didn't find it, by the way, you can also get a new one for Pesach Rishon. And if God forbid you didn't, you bring Pesach Sheni. You will always eat from it. And even though we are learning our Mishnah follows the opinions that eating is not essential, but it's definitely ideal 
The whole carbon Pesach is being brought for eating. In all of the prior cases in the Mishnah, wherever, there's always the possibility once I am connected to two animals, the downside is, is that if I don't know which one was brought first, even though I'm going to fulfill my obligation, but I will not be able to eat from either of them. So the Braisa points out, the top of the Tzadik Tez, Mikan, from this, now we know the source. From this series of laws say the sages, Yafa shtika lachachamim, silence is fitting, silence is beautiful for the wise. And how much more so, kal v'chaymer leptipshim, and how much more so for fools. Because if a fool only remains silent, no one will know that he or she is a fool. And that is to their advantage. As King Solomon says, shenemar evil machrish, that if, if, if there's a fool, but he's machrish, but at least he has enough seichel to be silent. Oh, so then chacham yei he will be considered wise. Gavaldik. It's amazing that mikan, and uh, guys, just to appreciate this mikan, uh, also understand that if I did not ask you to have me in mind, I am vulnerable. I might end up not having any Pesach. If I'm the guy that went looking for Pesach Aleph and I don't find it, then I spent the whole afternoon, I'm an action, I'm looking for it, I'm looking for it. But at least I know where I'm standing. I know that I have to find that animal, and if I don't have it, no one is doing it for me, which really always gives me the option of me on my own buying another one or going to a new group if I don't find my original group. And if none of that happened, at least I will eat Pesach Sheni. So here, when you're talking more, when each group is staying to the other, you know, have me in mind, have me in mind, all of that brings about the downside of if both are brought and we don't know which came first, which is probably very common, then the, no one will be able to eat from the carbon Pesach. Okay, and now the Gemara, three lines from the top, is focusing on the second scenario of the Mishnah. It's not that an animal got lost, but two carbonos or more got mixed up one with the other. No group knows which animal is theirs. So what the Mishnah said was, is that two groups, two animals. Each group should take any one of the two. Now, we don't know whether this was my original or not. And then if you remember, members should, should go to other groups. Someone from here goes to there, someone from there goes to here. What we accomplished is, in the earlier cases, is that for sure, one of the original members is by that right animal. And everyone makes a statement. That listen, if I was registered on the other one, I'm withdrawing from that, I'm going to this. And, and, and v'chulei v'chulei, and everything works out. Now the final case in the Mishnah was a lot more complicated. Because if we need to have, the way it sounds like, an original member of the group, certainly the animal may never be, even for one moment, ownerless. But the last case in the Mishnah was, is that there were two animals, and each one only had one person. And the animals got mixed up. Now what are you going to do? If I'm going to take one, you're going to take the other. If I'm going to withdraw from mine and go to yours, at that moment, an animal will remain ownerless. So the Mishnah says, doesn't matter. So if there was Reuven and Shimon, Reuven was connected to animal Aleph. Shimon was connected to animal Beis. Get two new people, Levi and Yehuda. Reuven should call in Levi. He should tell Levi, whichever one of these two was mine, you're with me. Doesn't matter that we don't know which animal. Shimon tells Yehuda, whichever one of these two was mine, you're with me. So now, you have two karbanos, each one has two people. And now, they make one goes to one side, one goes to the other side. That was the final case of the Mishnah, but here the Gemara is pointing out the following. If that were to happen, here there is a possibility, l'chura, that the, uh, the animal Aleph won't have with it any one of its original members. Now, any one meaning there was only one original member. Because if Levi and Yehuda actually remain with the animal that Reuven originally was on, but Reuven went to the other group. If Shimon, with Yehuda, if Shimon is the one that changes sides, so true, you accomplish that no animal for a moment remained ownerless, but there's a possibility that no original member will remain with, will remain with the animal. So therefore the Gemara says that Lema Lecha our Mishnah, doesn't follow the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda. That's more Mahmer. What's even Rabbi Yoisi, everyone subscribes to the fact that you may never have a carbon Pesach once it's designated. And it's the time to bring the Pesach. There may never be a moment where the animal remains ownerless or meanly less, 
without any registrants. But Rabbi Yaisi doesn't need for any one of the original members to remain on the animal. Rabbi Yehuda does. The Tanya as we learned, that when it says in Parshas Boy, the imyimat habayis mihiyois mise, the literal pshat is recorded this Pasuk many times, that being that we have to consume the animal in a very short amount of time, that if a household is so small for the large lamb, in other words, they won't be able to finish it, so they should count in, they should register more people. That's the pshat. The drasha here is, you actually can have people withdrawing, even though they were already registered. How many could withdraw? As long as one original member remains by the animal, only then is it good, so holds Rabbi Yehuda. So if you had 10 people, the original members, and then you got new people, then you got 11, and you got 12, and you got 13. According to Rabbi Yehuda, even though you have 11, 12, and 13, and even if all of the original 10 would withdraw and go to another group, you always will have 11, 12, 13. It's not enough. You have to have one from the originals. Rabbi Yehuda doesn't subscribe to that. Rabbi Yehuda, Can you just explain how that works? Because normally, didn't we learn that one person buys the lamb, so now he's the original group, just one guy, and then he gets a bunch of people to join him. So, when Rabbi when, when Yehuda says you need someone from the original, is it that original guy? So Danny, that, that's, that's the key of the answer of the Gemara. Hold, hold that thought. That is what has to be clarified. Good, good, good. You said very good. That will be the whole code of the sugya. But let's just get the words. Rabbi Yossi says no. The only thing that you may not do is, is that once it was already designated as a Pesach, and it's a Pesach, you can't have the animal without any registrants. There has to be someone on it. But it doesn't bother me if it's not from the original group. And again, like we explained, when you had the last case in the Mishnah, there was only two original people. We're going to call them now the original people, Reuven and Shimon. The animals got mixed up. So the Mishnah was very innovative in saying, first, let Reuven call a new guy, Levi. Let Shimon call in Yehuda. Once you have two people, then like the Mishnah says, I don't care if Reuven took the wrong animal. First of all, it could be he took the right animal. You don't know. Even if you took the wrong animal, so what? So what? So what? Because there's going to be a, a, an exchange. That means that you had Reuven and Levi, Shimon and Yehuda, and then one from each side will go to the other side. So someone will always be on each animal. But it might not be the original members. So L'Chayr, our Mishnah is not like Rabbi Yehuda. Says the Gemara, no, no, no. First of all, it fits with Rabbi Yehuda, and actually, our Mishnah is Dafka Rabbi Yehuda. That will explain the prior cases. So, first, Amar Rabbi Yechanan, Dani, that's exactly what. How do you define the original members? How do you define the original members? So, you would argue the f- simple answer would be who, brought the, who bought the animal initially? Who was there? It could be that I bought it, it could be that Lechatchila there was a group. Says the Gemara, hold on, let's go back and review another Machloikis, Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yossi. We learned the Machloikis, Rabbi Yehuda holds, that one may not have a carbon Pesach for only one person. Remember that sugya? Independent of whether you can eat it or not, whether it's going to become noiser or not. That was the Ma'achad. Rabbi Yehuda held that a carbon Pesach always has to be brought for at least two people. So therefore, when we speak about the original members, so how do you define the original members? If you're going to follow Rabbi Yossi, it Mamash fits one with the other. Rabbi Yossi holds that a carbon Pesach may be brought even only for one person. So then if one person bought the animal and designated that animal for a Pesach, that's called the original member. Everyone else that was added on later is called an Anon. But not according to Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda Lashitasi, who holds that you have to have at least two people, he will consider the first and the second person both original, even if they came at different times. So Reuven and Levi are the original members. Shimon and Yehuda are the original members. I don't care which one is going to go to the other side, there will always be at least one original member on each animal. Dafker works like Rabbi Yehuda. Amr Rabbi Yehuda, and Afilo Temer Rabbi Yehuda. Ki even the Amr Rabbi Yehuda. Guys, and that's Tzadik Aleph. That was another Machloik, it's Tanoim. That ein shoichte nasa Pesach ala yachid. This is only Rabbi Yehuda. Therefore, therefore, me'ikara la'amnuye achrina bahadei ko'i. Even if only one person de facto bought the animal and, the, and he designated the animal as a Pesach. And let's add, then it's Chatzois. 
everything that's needed that now, now, is, uh, desig now it's designated for Pesach. It's not called original because it's not good yet. You cannot bring it yet. You're missing one person. So when, now how many people do you have to add? Only one. Say that. So therefore, So the second one is the original member. So Aleph, it goes like Rabbi Yehuda. Now says Ravashi, I'll tell you a step further. Our mission is Dafka not Rabbi Yosi. Cannot be Rabbi Yosi because according to Rabbi Yosi's leniency, that you don't need to have any of the original members. You just never, you can never leave the animal ownerless. So when the Mishnah gave the cases of 5 and 5 and 10 and 10, let's read it inside. Because it says, If you had five groups, and each group had chamisha chamisha, right? chamisha chamisha, each group had five registrants, and all the five animals got mixed up. So it's not going to be a problem. Why wouldn't it be a problem? Every group of five will just take any one of the five animals, and then every member will go to one other group, means every group now will have one from all of the original groups. Why did the Mishnah have to give that case? I mean, this, this case is Dafke. Every animal will have at least one, not at least, it will only have one of its original members. But it has to be five animals, five groups of five. Why can't you have four groups of five, but one group of four? Why would that bother me? You understand? Or one group of six and one group of four? We never allow a group of four. Because if there would be one animal that has in it only four, even if you can make a scenario where there will always be someone on that animal, but then one animal will not have on it any of its original, uh, any of its original members. So let's read it inside. Shal chamisha in. Each animal needed to have five people, if we're speaking about five groups. Avol shal chamisha, if the roivar chamisha, but even if only one only had four people, and you have five animals, so one group had a sixth. You can still make it a way that there is a nice turnover of people, but then loy, then the din will be that you may not bring the Pesach. Why is that? Because the animal that only had four members on it, and if you have to move one member to every other group, then one animal will have a registrant. It will have a registrant that it never remained unregistered or registered less, but one of the original members won't be on it. And who, and so what? That's because our Mishnah, yes, Shema Mina, that our Mishnah requires one of the original members. Our Mishnah, Dafka, follows Rabbi Yehuda. Elama, like we explained, since Rabbi Yehuda demands for each animal to have on it two people, so the way you define the originals will be the first and the second, even if they didn't come together. And with this, we say, Hadran Allah Mishahaya Tamei, and we also say to a certain degree that we are making a seum today with Selikola Pesach Sheni, because indeed we were learning all of the dinam of Pesach Sheni, and now the Siata the Shmaya the Tzadik Tesamet Beis. We are starting the final chapter of Psachim. Interestingly, already with the name that there is a machlokes whether the whether it's Erev Psachim or whether it is Arve Psachim. Um, we're going to be learning the Gemara with the Rashbam and with some of Toisvusin. Just a, a the Rashbam, Baruch Haba to the Rashbam. Whoever did the new cycle, this is the first time we have the Rashbam. So Rashi had three daughters, and one of them married Rabbeinu Meir. And he had a son called Rabbi Shmuel. So Rabbi Shmuel ben Meir is the, is the Rashbam. And he is placed under what is on top. If it, we would have had certainty that it would have been Rashi, then we would have learned it with Rashi. But there's a big question as to who wrote the part on the top. So whenever we don't have Rashi, we go to the Rashbam. We also, you can see from the Toysvis that Toysvis did not have Rashi because a lot of what he writes is Rashi style. See, Rashi is normally like the teacher. It's simple pshat. And then Toysvis begins to point out that here it says one thing, there it says another thing, you have a contradiction. Mamish, we're going to learn a lot of Toysvis in with God's help because it's Mamish like learning Rashi. So starting with the words, Erev Psachim. So I want to start with the first Toysvis. Erev Psachim, so it says Toysvis, Igar Sinan Arve, Arve Psachim, grammatically makes more sense. Arve Psachim means on the eaves of Pesachs. That means Erev Pesach of every year. The following are the rules for every Erev Pesach. That's called Arve Psachim. What does Erev Psachim mean? 
So Toysvah says, the Igar sin in Erev, Hachi Kamar, Erev, Shashoychat and Boy, what's the Bach base? Shashoychat and Boy, Harbe Psachim. In other words, Erev, we're speaking about singular, so we're speaking about one year. Still it fits. Because since many Korbanis, well, many Korbanis, that was the day that the Beis Amikdash was the most busy, so Erev of when Psachim are brought. These are the two versions. Anyways, as you can see, even though in our Mishnah it says Erev, but on the header of every daf, we're going to follow the Girsa of Arve Psachim, and indeed people call this chapter Arve Psachim. So Erev, Arve Psachim. Somoch Lemincha. Let's chazer what we had on Brachas. There's two minchas. There is mincha gedoyla, mincha ketana. Mincha gedoyla is what we would call 1230, even though whenever we speak about 1230, it's never exactly 1230. It's really connected to what we call sho'oiz manayoiz. You got to take the day, let's go from sunrise to sunset, divided into 12. And that will be, so how long will every hour be? Well, not every hour will have 60 minutes. It's called seasonal hours. So when we're speaking about 12.30, it's of Shoiz Manayos, but let's just simplify 12.30. When, guys, we had this on Daf Nun Ches, Daf Noyach, when is the earliest time that a carbon Tamid was ever brought? 12.30. Really, theoretically, you can bring it right afternoon, but you didn't know if it's right afternoon. From 12.30 is when from they brought it. That time is called Mincha Gedoyla. And until today, one is allowed a Davin Mincha, which is in the place of the Talmud in the afternoon, as of Shois Manayo is 12.30. And then as we also learned in the Mishnah Daf Nun Ches, that when was, almost every day in the year, when was the carbon Talmud actually sacrificed, right? Nine and a half hours into the day, or three and a half hours into the afternoon, or what we would call 3.30, but the is manis. That is what we call mincha ketana. Now, samuch le mincha, what mincha are we referring to? As we will see, we are referring to mincha ketana. Now, mincha means 3.30. Samuch le mincha means 30 minutes prior to mincha ketana. That's the meaning. So, Arve Pesachim, Samuch Mincha, close to the time of Mincha, prior to Mincha, but again, Mincha Ketana, 3 p.m. Shois Maniyos, says our Mishnah, Lo Yoichal Adam, from that time onwards, a person may not eat, Lo Yoichal Adam, Ad Shetechshach, a person may not eat until it gets dark. Let's learn our first Rashbam. So going from the top of the Rashbams down nine lines, or the second to last narrow line in the Amid, Lo yoichal Adam, why did the Chachamim make such a Takana? Kedei says, uh, it's very important, because guys, we, had, we, we have today similar dinim regarding eating before you daven Mincha. And there are times that one may not eat because you might not daven. But then, once you daven Mincha, there's no problem with eating or doing other activities that one should not do. This is not related to that, says the Rashbam. It's Kedesh Yoichal Matzah Mitzvah L'Teyavoyin. Because we want, that since there is an obligation to eat matzah, we prefer for someone to eat that matzah mitzvah with an appetite. And what's the upside of eating it with an appetite? Mishum Hidur Mitzvah. Interesting. It makes the mitzvah more beautiful. When you enjoy the mitzvah, when you desire the mitzvah, it's an hidur mitzvah. Now guys, this is a huge theme in Hasidus. Just to know that there's the opposite side. The opposite side is, is that when we do a mitzvah that we don't understand, and we don't desire, and we don't feel for, th then we are doing it only for God. And that is expressing our bittel to God. And there is a great upside to that as well. Here we're learning the other side of the coin. That not only do we have bittul, or should we should have bittul, but there is also God wants for us aleph the yisoid kabbalah soil, but then for us to try to make our effort to understand, and for us to have a feeling, and for us to have a desire. And as we just mentioned yesterday, when it comes to Talmud Torah, we say vahadev no. That may the words be sweet. We want it to be sweet. Part of the mitzvah is to enjoy it. So Hidur Mitzvah here would mean to enjoy the matzah, meaning also to, to have an appetite. Okay, so says... But what are we doing this year with the Shlishis? We'll speak about that soon. We have to first speak about Purim. It's mamish connected to today's daf. 
Just to explain what Shloim is asking. That when there's a mitzvah to eat, like this year Pesach falls out, Motsoi Shabbos, Suda Shlishis is a mitzvah. If we're going to fulfill that mitzvah, it's going to take away from the Tayyavin. And my friends, Rab Shleimer, this is not only this year, but Chlau, every Su'udas mitzvah, like when you have a bris. So you should know like this, that the Ramah writes, the Ramah writes, let's go on this year, but we're learning Tavshan Peyal of other, Pesach, fall, uh, Purim falls out um, here, but Chutzlad, it falls out on Friday. No, it's outside Yerushalayim. The 14th day is on Friday. There is a mitzvah to have a Su'uda. That are more paskins, that you should have the suud in the morning. Because to eat, to eat, to eat the the Shuda Shabbos Litayovin. And then he brings down that if you have it in the afternoon, to have it at least before the tenth hour of the day. Mamish, what we're learning right now. The Al Tarebbe doesn't bring such a thing. We'll speak about that soon. But that's a big topic, that, just to be aware that if, if the meal Erev is a Su'udas Mitzvah, this goes to a bris, then many people are very lenient. Because don't forget that, like Rashbam says, not eating is because of Hidur Mitzvah. Now, of course, if, gonna come, if you could accommodate both, accommodate both. But if you were to eat later in the day, and that meal is a Mitzvah itself, a Mitzvah trumps a Hidur Mitzvah. Rabbi, yes. Uh, regarding Shabbos, isn't there as much as you're, we're saying that there's an Indian to be hungry, but there's also an Indian to taste food going into Shabbos? It's not, a, it's not a contradiction. So we're gonna we're gonna learn a toy Swiss that, Okay, Danny, we're gonna learn a toy Swiss that will clarify what you're saying. Okay. Now, now, you know what? We'll go straight to the toys. Look inside the second toy Swiss. Again, he wants to. He's like. The Rashbam was more bekitzer, but he's like acting like Rashi. What, what the Trois was also points out is, don't connect the Isra of eating with because you didn't daven, which is a big theme. It's not this. Afilu is palo. You daven mincha gedoyla. Umishum matzah kidomrinu bigemara. The beloy is palo tefilas mincha afilu b'shari moisashona asur, as we had in the beginning of Shabbos daftas. Now ask Stoisvis, Danny, this will answer your question. What did the Chachamim say? What exactly should you not eat? See, we are living in a different culture. You know what food meant for them? Bread. Everything else was Tama Nash. So, so guys, Stoisvis doesn't have to mention that, which is obvious. Chametz, we already learned in the first chapter, may already not be eaten biblically from noon. Midai Raisa. Ach, right? And then we added one hour, we added two hours prior to noon. So chametz you can't eat. What exactly food is bread? What bread would, would you be able to eat? And the chachamim say, no, 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 don't eat it because you're not going to eat it. Little you're not going to eat the matzah with appetite. E matzah, afilu koydim nami yasir. Matzah may not be eaten by rabbinic law from the morning of Erev Pesach. Aside of our minig, again, our minig is not to eat it either two weeks before or a month before. Kidamrinin bi Yerushalmi. Call ha'oichel matzah be'er of Pesach. Whoever eats matzah on the eve of Pesach, ki ilu boil arusasa be'beis chamev. It's tantamount to a person, God forbid, having a relation with his kala before he took her to the chupa. Ah, so you're going to answer? That's your question, Danny. Ah, but mini targima. Mini targima means everything other than bread. By the way, this includes meat. What we would call a meal, having some toya meha chayim zachur. Right? That's what Danny is quoting. That whoever eats. From its food, tastes life. That's a remez, that's a, to eat from Shabbos food before Shabbos. So you're going to taste a little bit of the meat. You're going to have some fruits. You're going to have some vegetables. Or, or you're going to have a smoothie. All of these things. The Gemara, the says, we're going to learn soon that you, you could. That's not included in the Gezeda. You can eat up until the end, Danny. Until, until Shkia, guys. Once Shkia comes, then you can't eat anything until you make Kiddush. That's a Gavalda Kekasha. It's based on the premise that eating means flour from the five grains. So what exactly are you not allowed to eat? So answers to this. Yes, Shloimer. The Aira ba matzah ashira. Rich matzah means matzah that's not flour and water. It's flour and fruit juice. It's, which is dangerous when it comes to, it becomes chametz quick. Or it doesn't become chametz at all. That whole sugar, right? We say that it doesn't become chametz at all. Or if you have flour and eggs, what we call egg matzah. Chocolate coated matzah, any type of matzah that one may not use to fulfill one's obligation 
of eating matzah at night because matzah has to be lechem oini, which means many things. It means lechem sho'oinin oleho devarim harbe. But it also means bread of the poor, flour and water. There's nothing else in the matzah other than flour and water. Matzah ashira, since that matzah may not be used to fulfill your obligation. So when we quote the Yerushalmi, kol ha'oichel matzah be'erif Pesach il bayer arosasoi, it doesn't go for a matzah that is good enough for the mitzvah. Matzah ashira is not included in that gezeira. The liyasa bi Yerushalmi ela be matzah ro oyelot seis bayichoy vasoi. And if you eat that matzah, ooh, then you boil out of sasai. Avul matzah ashira, you are allowed to eat an out of Pesach. That is the matzah that the Mishnah is saying, that Chazal here, Arvei Pesach, I'm saying, lo yoichal, from samuch lemincha at shetechshach. Matzah ashira is that which should not be eaten. And you know what Toysavah says? Techein hoye noyeg rabbeinu tam. What exactly does that mean? He was noyeg dafke to eat matzah shira every year, or was the Rabbeinu Tam referring to like this year where where Shabbos is out of Pesach, and here you have a mitzvah of having suuda Shabbos? Forget about the suuda shlishis shalashudas. Speak about the eating in the morning. Now, if a person is going to daven early this year. Then you can st- and, you, and you're going to end up eating before this man of Isra Achilas chametz. Then you can have proper chametz. And we're going to speak about. And then you have to figure out how to dispose of chametz, even though we made a burning of the chametz Friday at the same time to have the same time consistent. But what do you do with the remainder? So we have to dispose of it. We th- we throw it. We flush it down the toilet. If there's some crumbs left, and there's always some crumbs left for chulei v'chulei. But if you miss the time, so then you can have. You can fulfill your mitzvah, su'uda Shabbos, with matzah ashira. That's called food. It's from the five grains. That is what the Mishnah is referring to. Next line. Ad shetechshach. Very important. You may not eat until it gets dark. Now guys, dark does not mean shkia. Dark means tzeis. And this is a very important liner. Guys, when it comes to Shabbos, we are allowed to take in Shabbos early. Yes, we have to daven mincha before plaga mincha, but if we do so, we can take in Shabbos early. When we take in Shabbos early, we can make Kiddush before it's dark. Lechat chila. Not on Pesach. That's the Atshat Tachshach. That you may never take this in early. One will not be allowed to eat until it gets dark. Only from then on do you begin. Now, we're not going to begin with the meal. We're going to begin with the first of the four cups, Pseder. But that has to be after dark. Another din of the Mishnah. I just want you to know every line is packed. People can spend forever, but we're going to try to, as of tomorrow, go a lot quicker. Afilu anishu be Yisrael, even if someone, God forbid, is poor, lo yoichel atshi yosef. Another din. He should only eat as he reclines. Now, reclining is a stamp of freedom. Free people used to eat rec- reclining on their left. Unlike people that are not free, were not allowed to recline. It was not the way, it was not their modo de operandus. And as we will be learning that part of the seder, or the mitzvah of retelling the story, isn't only verbal, it's also primarily verbal. But it's about enacting, it's about reliving, it's ideally about having the experience. Part of the experience of freedom is to recline. Now, we don't recline by everything, it's generally on those items that are connected to the redemption, other the other other items like the mother that are connected to the servitude in which we don't recline, our minik chabad is that women don't recline, but the concept of reclining, even during a, a era where wealthy people still reclined and poor people never did, on Pesach, Everyone is the wealthy person. On Pesach, everyone is a free person. Another din. It's amazing how the, how the Mishnah writes it. It's a beautiful rabbi. He doesn't write it. You have to have four cups. That would be a yeah, The Rambam writes that way. Rabbi Nakadosh writes that that if you have a poor person who doesn't have funds, so he's being supported by the community. Now, the community is not obligated to give someone beyond the basic needs. On the night of Seder, the basic need is four cups of wine. No, no less than four cups of wine. 
It's amazing. No less. Can you imagine how you, you, who would write that way? And vafilu mina tamchoi. Tamchoi, there were different types of charity funds amongst Jewish communities. One was money, and one is called a food platter. Now, who is eligible, sadly, to receive funds from the tamchoi, tzedakah kase, the poorest of the poor? The most, the, 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 the people that had the least. There were many people that qualified to get money, but they did not qualify to get food from the food platter. So even if someone is receiving money from the tamchoi, nevertheless, he's mechoyev to have no less than four cups of wine. It's getting late. I want to read at least some of the Rashbam Amish in the middle of the Rashbam under the Gemara. So he's quoting from a Bereisha Sanabo. From Rav Huna B'Shem Rav Abba Amar Keneged Arba L'Shoi Negeula Hu Amurim B'Golos Mitzrayim V'Hoitzeisi V'Go'alti V'Lokachti V'Hitzalti And note how the Seder of, of the words is whoever is a Balkaira or if you learn Chitas really good it's out of the order just to be aware of that. So Rashi brings over, and there's so many other sources for the Dalot Koises. Everyone has to have Dalot Koises. Now, at least one Toysvist. I want you to know everything here is jammed, is, lo- is loaded. Look inside the second Toysvist in the widest lines. It begins, the line begins, Toysvist, Divri HaMaschel, Lo Yifchas Uloyma Arba Koises. Says Toysvist, Mitoy Chaloshin Mash Maktsas, that from the way Rebbe wrote the Mishnah, because the Rebbe wrote it in the singular. Loi yivchasu loi. Don't, don't, give him, don't give him, not the family, not every individual. Don't give him less. We're not obligated to give every member in the household of the Ani. Only for him. And for who? And he's going to make Kiddush. And yes, he will drink the wine. But no one else will have wine. And it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, says Toysavis. It's not that every individual has to have their own Dalit Koises. And Toysavis adds, this Svaruhu makes sense. Because the Maishna Arba Koises Mikidish. The Chalashana, when it comes to Kiddush the whole year, it's good to know, guys. It's, I know that our minig is everyone will taste it. First of all, everyone that tastes a little bit of the wine, no one has to have a Roiv Revis. No one does that. Many people might do it as an option, but you don't, need, you don't need that. You really don't even need for anyone to drink any of the wine. It says in Shulchan Aruch, everyone tasting some of the wine is ahid, it's beyond the letter of the law. So Toysav says, She'echod moitzi yaskulam. So why would this be different than Kiddush? Oh, guys, if you would know how much books were written on this Toysav, it's amazing. We don't accept this. We say, no, we say that actually when it comes to the Seder night, everyone, what we do, everyone has a cup. And everyone says the Kiddush. They say the Kiddush. And everyone drinks the Kiddush. And according to that, you have to support not only the Ani. Everyone in the Ani's household with, with, with at least, at least, the, the, the at least is the best. I love that at least. Because that's already a remez to, to, the, to, the, to Mashiach. And to the Koshal Lelio. But when it comes to giving tzedakah, then you're not mechoyev to, to supply doesn't say you're not allowed. It says you're not obligated to give every uh, ani more than the four cups. Okay, Chavre, let's start with the Gemara. Says the Gemara. I don't understand. But Erev Pesach, you may not eat Samuch Lemincha? What, to eat matzah with an appetite? Don't we have the same concept every Erev Shabbos? Not but Toysavus. We are agreeing with the Rashbam and with the Toysavus. We're not speaking about every weekday. Every weekday... The issue is not to have a meal before you daven mincha. Now, parenthetically, we, thank God, have the schus to daven with the minion. If we have a fixed time to daven with the minion, then there's no problem having a meal. Like we daven over here right before shkia, but we daven every day together. I can have a meal 4 p.m. even though I didn't daven mincha because I have a fixed time to daven mincha. We're speaking about someone that doesn't go to a minion and they have no fixed time. Their bechlal don't eat a meal bread before you daven mincha. I get that. The Mishnah is speaking about even if someone David Mincha. The issue of the mitzvah, like the Rashbam says, like Toysva says, is that we want to make sure that at night when you eat the matzah, you eat it with an appetite. Hidur mitzvah. Well, every Shabbos and Yom Tev, there is a mitzvah to eat. So my iria arve psachim, you see the Gemara's girsa was arve psachim. Not erev psachim. Afilu arve Shabbos, 
we also have the same takonas chachamim ditanyom. Now, really, it's a machloikas tanoim. Note the difference. Our Mishnah says Samoch Mincha. Here in this Braisa, Braisa number one, it says Mincha Mincha. That's already a difference. Mincha means Mincha Ketana. Mincha Ketana is Shoy's Manayo is 3 30 p.m. Samoch Mincha means 30 minutes prior. That will be one approach. But let's go just generally. You can't have a Mincha Mailo. Why? Same thing. Kadeshi Yakanis, Lashabas, Kishahu, Tava. Tava means we want you to have a type, we want you to have an appetite. Divide Rabbi Yehuda. Now, Rabbi Yoisi Yoimer, Oichel Vahoilach Achatechshach, that there is no such rabbinic enactment by Erev Shabbos and Erev Yomtiv. You can eat until it gets dark. The Gemara's Havamina is based on the premise that our Mishnah cannot be Rabbi Yoisi. Why? Because just like Rabbi Yoisi is not worried about an appetite for Shabbos and Yom Tiv, why would Rabbi Yoisi be worried about an appetite for Pesach? Well, it's the same thing, mitzvah, mitzvah. That's the Havamina. So it must be that our Mishnah is following Rabbi Yehuda. So then what's unique about Erev Psachim or by Arve Psachim? It's not a din regarding Pesach, it's a din regarding all the Yom Tovim. Answers the Gemara, Amar Afuna, no, the premise of your question was wrong. You assume, we assumed that our Mishnah cannot be Rabbi Yaisi because again, Rabbi Yaisi doesn't care about an appetite here. Why would he care there? Why would he care about over here? No, there's a difference. Amar Afuna lo yitzricha elo Rabbi Yaisi. And Achanami, our Mishnah is not Rabbi Yehuda. What did we have in the last Amid? That the last Mishnah in the last ninth Patek was Dafke Rabbi Yehuda. According to Rabbi Yaisi, you can have, maybe you can have from the five groups, one group can be a four. There's a, there's a flow here. So that was Rabbi Yehuda. Rav Huna says, this Mishnah is Dafka not Rabbi Yehuda. It's not Dafka not. Rabbi Yehuda would agree to it, but Rabbi Yehuda wouldn't give you a din only for Pesach. The Omar, Rabbi Yehuda says generally, Oichel v'hoi l'chacha techshach. So we need to know, Hanemili, where does Rabbi Yehuda not care about an appetite? Or he's not concerned that eating will take away your appetite? Maybe Rabbi Yehuda felt you can have a meal with bread and you can still have an appetite. You know, sometimes eating opens up the appetite. Hanami the Bavisha was the Yom Tovim. Avol be Erev Pesach. Mishum Chiyuv the Matzah Moidem. In other words, yes, there's a mitzvah to eat on Shabbos, but Chevre, where does that come from? The Korosa la Shabbos Oinig Yeshaya Divrei Kabbalah. Words of the prophets. Words of the prophets have more weight than rabbinic law, but it's not biblical law. When it says in Parsha's boy, Bo'erev toich lumatzois, that's a biblical commandment. You can't compare one with the other. That's called a chiyuv. Here, Rabbi Yoisi is more concerned. No food from Samach Lemincha. That's answer number one. Now, Rav Papa Amar, he's going to give answer number two, and his answer will be refuted. Rav Papa Amar, Afilotem and Rabbi Yehudam, look at the words of the Braise that we quoted, look at the words of the Mishnah, and they are not like, they are not the same. Over there, Hassam, if you look in the Braise, it says, What does Rabbi Yehuda say? From when may one not eat a meal of bread or of products that come from the five types of grains? Mincha mincha ulamaylo daaser. Mincha ketana is shazmani is 3.30. However, samuch mincha prior, prior to mincha, close to mincha, earlier, shari, avol be'erath Pesach, that's the novelty. It's not the concept, but it's a, you know, just, it's a quantitative addition. It's even more time. Okay, now we're going to have something that, you know, we have to become familiar. Mishnayis was written, but al Rebbe wrote the Tanya. al Rebbe wrote the Tanya, every word, every letter was thought out for a long time. There's a certain precision to the Mishnah, and there's a certain brevity to the Mishnah that no other work of the oral Torah has. God forbid, we're not minimizing Brises. Brises generally are lengthier, and on top of that, not everyone knew all the Brises, and because of the fact that it wasn't reviewed and memorized with the same vigor as Mishnah is, some Brises, what we will call, became corrupted. That means that, that people kept on memorizing them, but they got something wrong. So yeah, the Braisa that we quoted doesn't write Samach Mincha, writes clearly Minha Mincha. But now we're going to learn 
Brisa number two. Now one of these two Brisas are wrong. And, we, and, and we're going to determine which one is wrong. For Hatanya it says, I will call this Brisa number two. Look at this, look at these words now. Not mina mincha. Mi teisha shoi sulamayim. Mincha's teisha vachatsi. Samuch mincha, what we call 3 p.m., is really nine hours from the morning. Same thing. Mi teisha shoi sulamayim. Kadeshi yikonis le Shabbos kishahu taivet divrei rab Yehuda and rab Yosi oimir hoylech oheylech hachatechshach. Clearly, this brisa said exactly the same by out of Shabbos and Yantav and out of Pesach. Now, the answer of uh, the first answer of Rav is great. Rafuna says exactly our mission is even Lashitas Rabbi Yaisi. It's only Lashitas Rabbi Yaisi. According to Rabbi Yudah, there's no Chiddush. But you would have Papa, the premise of the answer is based on an erroneous Braisa. Now the Gemara counters Omar Marzutra. We don't jump to say that a Braisa is corrupt. We're speaking about something was wrong. But if you have two, it's either one or the other. So, man leimolach dimetaretz tehi. How do you know that this one, you know, Tayrots means an answer? Tayrots means that this is the one. That's authoritative. How do you know the second one is authoritative? Maybe the second one that you quoted, this one is corrupt. And the first one we quoted in the beginning of the Gemara, that's the one that's authoritative. So one, one of them is wrong. So I'll tell you how I know that the latter one is correct. And the latter one refutes Rav Papa's answer. Because I know this is the way Torah, oral Torah, it's about who taught it. It's about who taught it. And when I went to the lecture of Rav Pinchas, and it's not even that he taught the Braisa, but since we come Tane Tana Kamei, yeah, the word Tana normally means a rabbi from the era of the, of the, of, of the Mishnayas. But no, not over here. Rav Pinchas is a Amoira. So the so the kam tana the tanikame means that you had certain individuals from a later era that they were the memory geniuses. They knew everything by heart, and they like today you open up a book, then you would call that person and tell him, say zog chazer review review adin, and he was the one that taught the latter b'raisa, not not mina mincha lamaila, but mitesha shoyisu lamaila. And when he said it in front of Rav Pinchas, no one, Rav, Rav Pinchas didn't push back. So that's the way the Mesoida works. When you have someone in the caliber of Rav Pinchas that heard the latter Baraisa and accepted it, it means that the latter one is authoritative, meaning that the one that we began the Gemara with, that's the one that became corrupted. So Iyoche, that refutes the answer of Rav Papa, no, our Mishnah cannot be Rabbi Yehuda, because then there's nothing novel about the Erev or Arve Psachim, and therefore, El Machavrta must be like Rafuna, that our Mishnah is following Rabbi Yosi, when that Chiddush, and that's a big Chiddush, that we, he's not concerned about having an appetite. It's not that he doesn't care about an appetite. Divrei Kabbalah, Divrei Chachamim are important. Divrei Kabbalah, of course, are important. He feels that your person can have bread in the afternoon and they will still have an appetite. You know, a, a person will be mindful. But there's something unique. Since there is a biblical mitzvah, the of Toich so it's amazing. So because of a Hidur mitzvah, because of a Hidur mitzvah, the Chachamim made a it's not a hidr mitzah, ah, it's just a hidr. Now we have a, a gzera. You may not eat matzah ashira. Ah, toisvis, you may not eat matzah ashira. Min samuch le mincha, ulamayla, chavra to be continued.